Previously on Bleach. Mayori's fight commences with Pernita's ability getting on his nerves, but despite all his underhanded tactics, he can't seem to touch upon an answer to his problems, especially when Pernita has a handily copied his Bankai's power and is now about to slap a bitch, but hands off Pernita because Nemu has a trick up her sleeve. Ugh, this is what happens when my fans send me in all these puns. Ugh. Son of a Sternritter T! Everybody, checking here, hit review Bleach chapter number 642, titled Baby Hold Your Hand 5. Eyes are open. Also, a little uh, note it has been 100 chapters since the revealing of Ichigo's awesome new twin Zongetsu. So, that's an interesting note of how far we've come since then. All right, so this is primarily a flashback chapter in that the events that actually occur on the battlefield with Mayuri and Nemu and Pernina really only take up like. I don't know, three pages. Most of it either cuts back down to the 12th Division to see what they're doing without uh, Mayori and Nemu there, or it focuses on Nemu's past. With that being said, the chapter starts off while focusing on Nemu's past. So we cut back to an undetermined amount of time. All I can really gather from this is it takes place sometime after Turn Back the Pendulum, but sometime before the events of uh, Masaki and Ishin meeting each other. So this is anywhere from like 100 years ago to uh, 30 years ago. Ago. I'm not really sure on the exact time frame. Nemo appears to be, a, well, she is a younger girl here. I would say maybe about like five or six appearance wise. See, the funny thing is with how Shinigami and how they age but that might not really apply to Nemu, considering that she's not really a real Shinigami, she's just an artificial being, and from what we're gonna find out later on in the chapter, she might in fact age like at a normal rate, like a normal human. So I'm just gonna say she's like, you know, between five or six years old. Anyway, she's talking to Akon, who I guess at the time was still a member of the 12th Division, I'm gonna still assume he was the third uh, seat at the time, and he's bas uh, she's basically asking him, hey, the captain has stopped addressing me by my name, and he's been calling me something else, and Akon Khan's just like, oh, well, seriously, what the fuck are you talking to me about this, really? It's just funny. It's like he's like acting like Nemu's babysitter whenever Mayori goes out to do something. You know, I don't know who. Um, He might, in fact, be the vice captain. Yeah, because I don't really know who the hell would be a vice captain before uh, Nemu came along. So he might as well be that case. Um, But, you know, the 12th Division members don't wear like the normal She-Hawk shows with like the bands on them and stuff. So there's no way to tell. But I can't think of anyone else it would be. Um, But yeah, Akon basically just like, well, uh, you're he. what is he calling you? And, and, and uh, Nemu's like, well, he's He's not calling me Nemuri Nanago, which is the name he gave to me when I first awoke. He's calling me Nemu now. And I guess she doesn't really like that name, or she likes being called Nemuri instead. So with that being said, uh, we then get the title page, and then we cut back to the 12th Division in the present, where we have them kind of just fixing everything up and kind of rebuilding the place um, after the events of the uh, the invasion of the Vondenreich. I'm assuming since Yuha took the uh, entire Quincy city from the Seirete and ro uh, rose it up to form the Warwelt, I'm assuming that the, uh, the build buildings in the Seirite re return to normal, at least to the point where maybe they, they're demolished, but now they're like in the process of rebuilding, it looks like. Because um, otherwise, then the Seirite would just be like just this empty field, you know, otherwise, you know, if, if the buildings didn't return, that's all it would be with the Quincy City up there now. While this is going on, one of the un uh, previously unknown members, it's the it's the girl with the glasses who, um, I always remember her because I thought she had like these like ponytail, pigtail things at first, but it turns out like they're not actually pigtails, they're like, they're like her hair and then like chains are coming out of her head and then tufts of hair at the end of the chains to be just to notion like the really weird nature that each of the uh, members of the 12th division I, I don't know if Kubo's going for like them looking like demons or figures from Japanese mythology you know because Akon has the four horns on his head whatever the fuck Yosu is you know I don't know um but yeah they're they're basically just trying to fix the place up and then her name is uh, Kuna I guess she's messing with a control panel or something and then these uh three cylinders pop out 
and she gets freaked out by this. Meanwhile, Akon just kind of chastises her, like, what the hell are you doing, Kuno? We're trying to fix this place up. Oh, I'm sorry, Akon-sama. It's just that these cylinders popped up, and oh, hey, I remember these things. <laughs> well, we were in the middle of fixing up this entire place after we got wrecked by the Quincy's in hopes that we can maybe fight back, but I guess it's time for a trip down memory lane, I suppose. Oh my god, Akon, you have to come quickly! The nuclear reactor's about to shut down! We only got about five minutes! Hyosu, would you shut up? I'm trying to be all nostalgic over here! So Akon explains to Kuna, by the way, I have no idea if this is any relation to Mashiro Kuna, because they have similar... I, I don't know if that if he's referring to her by the last name or not. It sounds just kind of like a nickname or something, so maybe her her actual name is longer than that. But anyway, um, Akon explains to Kuna the uh, significance of the three vials that came out. They are the three prototypes that preceded Nemu, which were uh, Nomuri, well, I guess it would be Nomuri, like Ichigo, Nigo, Sango, you know, one, two, three. So these are the original three that uh, Mayori was uh, working on, you know, as a prototype. But he states that there's really not much of them left. All that really is in these vials is something that akin to, like, pocket lint that Kuna calls it. It, it, it probably just like like little strands of DNA or whatever they could ha hobble together to create an artificial soul. Because I brought up last chapter review, like, this is a big deal that the Soul Society can just create artificial life. And this is the chapter that really brings up to that fruition, like, hey, this isn't just something we just did, you know, we just woke up one day and decided, hey, we can make life. You know, this took a lot of time and a lot of failures occurred in between. So one, two, three were the initial failures of that test. Akon goes on to explain that number four was the first one that actually developed into something resembling a human brain, and uh, that it didn't last very long after that, but it was using that technology they were able to figure that out, and uh, another member of the 12th Division who kind of looks like a freaky clown, motherfucker. I don't know, he creeps me out. This guy, ugh, I don't know. But anyway, he comes up and he has like this head, you know, head wrapping and he's like, oh, so it was from the uh, advancements that we got from the fourth uh, clone that I was able to get my head fixed. So I don't know what the story with this dude is. If he was like walking down Segrete one day and he got his head crushed and then Mayori's like, we can fix him. We have the technology. <laughs> By the way, I'm going to paint his face like me just for a joke. <laughs> Actually, fun little tidbit I've discovered this week. Um, I have a philosophy class in my uh, university I'm attending, and uh, we were watching a video, and part of the video was showing a uh, trickster gods from Native American religions, and the trickster gods that they showed all had face paint that was black and white that was very similar to Mayori's right now. I was trying to find an image of it to show you. Couldn't find the exact image, but uh, it looked pretty much exactly like Mayori's face paint. And I'm sitting there watching, and I'm like, trickster god, huh? That's... That's not, because he's a Shinigami, he's technically a god, and Mayori's all about, you know, I don't know, it's kind of fixing it up there. Him and Loki need to have some, uh, have, a, like, a breakfast, uh, sometime. I think they would get along. But anyway, yeah, so, uh, continuing on, Akon explains what occurred, uh, after the fourth prototype, moving on to the fifth one. He states, this was the first one that was able to develop into something resembling a fetus, to which he was able to modify, Mayori was able to modify his Zanpakuto, gain a Bankai, and get a promotion to captain. Oh, so that explains what the fuck this thing is. Is. Good, all right, I'll have, as long as they explained it, which also brings uh, credence to my theory that this is not the original form of Konjiki Yashi Soki Jizo. In fact, from this information Akon just laid on us, it seems that Mayori artificially gained Bankai in a similar manner that uh, Uohara did. You know, he had the Tenshin Tai shit that basically forced the Zanpakuto spirit out, because let's be honest here, it doesn't seem like Mayori would establish something of a conversation with his Zanpakuto in order to achieve Bankai, the sadist nature that he is. So maybe, you know, he just, he developed his Bankai all on his own artificially. This isn't even what, like, the natural Bankai of Konjiki Yashi Soki, of Ashi Soki Jizo looks like. Um, but that explains that, although now I kind of want to know how exactly Mayori's promotion to captain went, like, taking the captain test, that, yeah, that must have been pretty damn weird. Now let us step back in time, for instance, using this pendulum because I'm so clever because I'm Kubo because the pendulum means time travel, blah, 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 blah. It's a metaphor. Okay, so as you can see, I am a little bit young and I exactly haven't mastered my Bankai yet, but I'm a boy genius that's leagues above all my peers and uh, let's be honest here, I'm more fit to be a captain than the current captain of Squad 10, so can you please just give me this position so I can get the fuck out of there and actually do something relevant to the Soul Society? Yeah, you know what? You are pretty qualified there, Toshiro, but uh, we already have one white-haired captain. We don't need two, uh, so I'm just gonna have to reject you. Oh, come on! That is bullshit! Hey, Toshiro, can you help me? I got my head stuck in the toilet again. Oh, god damn it! Coming, Captain Shiba! Ugh. All right, who's next? Ah, that would be me, head captain! Mayuri Kurotsuchi, Squad 12. 
Oh, yeah. Well, weren't you that guy that got arrested for, uh, what is this? Experimenting with corpses and stringing them up by their entrails? What the fuck? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that's all in my past. It's, you know, science has to move forward. Okay, well, whatever. Uh, anyway, can you perform your bonkai for us, please? Ah, yes. I just mastered it yesterday, in fact. Oh, all right, but uh, is it okay for you to release it in here? I mean, it's kind of a tight space. Ah, no, it'll be fine. Although I'm not really sure what it looks like, but it'll be fine. Bonkai! So do I get the position? Yes, yes, fine, fine. You can become captain of Squad 12. Just please, don't, don't ever do that again. Oh, I'm gonna have nightmares for a month now. Jeez. And then Akon finally explains that the last clone that immediately preceded Nemu number six uh, lasted a two years old before the cells eventually degenerated and it died. So that's the indication that, you know, this one made two years old and it looks like about a two-year-old infant. So, you know, maybe the aging with Nemu appears, you know, at the, at the same rate or a similar rate to a human. But anyway, of course, the big deal here is Nemu's existence. Number seven, which, which Akon states that after they achieved, you know, this, after Nemu was revealed to live longer than two years and the cells didn't uh, degrade, they were actually evolving to a sense, Mayori was overjoyed. With that being said, we cut back up to the, uh, to the uh, Warwelt Palace where we see Nemu about to do what she was doing last chapter, which is interesting here because, um, you know, we had uh, Pernitus, uh, okay, he has three arms, okay? So we still haven't really addressed the third one, but the first arm, the main arm, was about to crush Mayori, and then we had another one that was about to attack Nemu, and the last chapter had Nemu looking up, and then we see her jump off. We didn't really know what happened there. So here's what happened. Nemu apparently at one point also grew another arm because, you know, she cut off her arm. I don't know if she used, I don't think she used the Hojikazai stuff. I think she just, like, spontaneously grew another arm. It's gonna make sense from what we find out about her powers in a second, but what she did was, you know, at the blink of an eye, she, like, you know, squatted and just, like, shot onto the freaking sky like a rocket, so that avoided that attack and heading straight toward Mayuri to save him. And, uh, this is a big deal because, you know, this is basically implying that she has surpassed, at least at the moment, Zoraki in terms of speed because because that's, you know, what Pernido was at and, and how Nemu was able to, uh, you know, transcend that level. So then we get another flashback as Nemu is flying to save Mayori, which uh, this time Akon is explaining, you know, why don't you ask Mayori this issue instead of me? Because I have no idea. And Nemu, as a little child, is just like, I don't think, you know, Mayori is going to respond to this if I ask him. So Akon's just kind of, I love it, give me, he gives this face like, okay, freaking kid. All right. Um... So, apparently, Akon thinks that he'd just be embarrassed if he brought it up to the fact that this is something that Mayuri has been aspiring to do for years, and he cuts back to the, the first time that uh, Mayuri came up with this project, and this is when I said it's like at an undetermined amount of time that we have yet to, uh, you know, see before, because he doesn't, he has a completely different set of face paints, so we know that in the Turn Back the Pendulum, he had that one particular set of face paint with, like, the black, uh, just, like, over his eyes, and we saw him very, very briefly, as in, like, one panel during, uh, Ishin's backstory, and we saw he had the regular face paint he had at the beginning of the series, like, in the Soul Society arc, and this is when he has like a completely different one, like an inner an intermediate between the two. So this this takes place, I don't know, like 50 years ago, 60 years ago, I don't know. But it, it, during the creation of the project of Namur Namuri, he came up with the idea like, well, Shinigami are gods, so we should be able to create life as if the Rayo has created our lives. So this is what he kind of becomes obsessed over, and he states that he's going to call it the Namuri project because it's basically dreaming about giving life to something, and dreaming while you're awake is just lunacy. Yeah, coming from you, Mayori, the poster child for sanity, I'm sure. But, yeah, he basically states that this is going to be the Namuri project, and Akon just goes on to explain, just basically has to do with, you know, Mayori's sense of, uh, you know, cynicism and shit, and how he names things. He, he, he's, he's very, he's very sarcastic kind of deal. And everything that, Nem that Nemu has aspired toward up to this point, how she's, you know, eating, sleeping, breathing, her wisdom and intelligence keep on growing and, and increasing, that one day Mayuri even figured that she would re he would realize this of of her power and how it keeps on increasing or evolving. Hey, kind of similar to that giant arm thing you're fighting, right? So um, yeah, that's the point here, how Nemu is basically constantly getting stronger, uh, maybe to the point where she's even going to surpass Mayuri. 
So the last thing Nemu asks of Akon is that maybe even if she's aware of how intelligent she is, if he if she goes back to acting all ignorant, will Mayuri go back to calling her Nemuri? And Akon basically just like, don't be ridiculous because you are the captain's greatest masterpiece after all. There's no way you simply wouldn't evolve in progress. So we cut back and we see that, yeah, something's changing inside Nemu. She's got the crazy eyes going on, okay? So this aura starts acting up all around her and her eyes go blank. And then we just see these two panels back to back. We see the one panel with uh, Mayuri about to be attacked, you know, by uh, Pernita's main body. And the next panel, we just... Boom! She just fucking darts through that son of a bitch. Whole thing explodes, and she just, like, grabs Mayuri in the process, and... You know, he's freaking out, like, oh, like, shit, when did you have this level of power? Like, when did you freaking go Super Saiyan, Nemu? I didn't install these protocols! So, anyway, um, yeah, Nemu's eyes then change a little bit, so they have, like, an extra pupil. Kind of reminds me of, like, the Byakugan, but whatever. It's, like, an extra pupil. I really wish, this is one of the situations I really wish was animated, so we could see, like, exactly all the changes that really happened. Because I'm sure there's, she's got, like, an aura going around her, her eyes, maybe are glowing, but, you know, it's manga, you can't tell. But, anyway, yeah, so, um, she... Basically, they're having a little bit of argument on, you know, Mayori stating, you know, I told you not to help me, I told you not to do this, and uh, she's like, it's not a problem, I can maintain this power level, you know, for 400 seconds, and how she achieved this was that she pushed her limit to, like, 0.8%, so, basically, from the one I'm understanding this, she could you know, anytime she wanted, increased the power of her soul up to a certain degree, and here she increased its level to 0.8% before it broke, as if, you know, she was that close to, like, reaching a threshold where, I guess, her soul could not withstand the power, and it would, like, basically kill her. Um, but she was, but she's, you know, really intelligent, he has, she has this special body structure, so I guess she can push herself to these really intense limits. Also, that number, 400 seconds, I actually deduced that to, I mean, I converted that over to minutes, I don't know if this means anything, but 400 seconds is 6.66 minutes. I, I don't I don't know if Kubo wanted that to be like, oh, shit's going to happen in a negative way, but I could have already figured that, but I'm just throwing that out there. Kind of an interesting little conversion there. So um, Mayuri's like, but you weren't ordered to do this. And Nemu's like, it's not my order, it's my purpose. My purpose is to protect Mayuri. And Mayuri's like, wrong, your purpose is to mature and develop. And Nemu's like, well, I can't, you know, I can't show you that how much I've matured and developed unless I do this. So it's basically like her purpose is just to show off now and show her, and show her master her father how much she's grown and how much uh how much his project has really succeeded honestly so he just cut she just kind of leaves him on the top of this building and then sent uh shoots off to go fight pernita again and Mayuri gets up and just has this scowl on his face, just like, to think of the day that would come where I would have to entrust a fight to Nemu. It doesn't get any more demeaning than this, but hey, this is something big because this is basically Mayuri admitting he can't win this. Like, the fact that he's saying, like, Nemu is stronger than me, I have to trust this fight to her, is basically the same thing as saying, I'm out of tricks, or whatever tricks I have left won't work. This thing is just too strong. It can, it has the power of my Bankai, it's on the level of Zoraki, I'm, I, I've used up all my shit, I've already taken some battle damage, I don't have any healing medicine, I'm up shit creek without a paddle here, and Nemu comes by in a fucking speedboat, you know, like, let's just let her take care of Pernita for now. So, we get uh, the last scene of the chapter, we get Mayuri looking on, scowling, we get a close-up view of Nemu as she's like rocketing toward the fucking sky at like Mach 6 and then she jumps up and oh I can see the upskirt whatever anyway Nemu goes and she activates her ultimate technique which is kind of like her only technique because we don't really see much going on but ultimate technique here we go she shaves off 6% of her soul which basically means she's you know damaging her own like soul or like once again taking off parts of her soul for this but she converts that into a power that forms in a ring around her hand runs right up to Pernida get code Jurichu! Boom! And she just fucking, like, slams her fist, like, right through Pernida, and this, like, compressed ball of her soul just rips through that fucker's eye. And it's just, like, she states, like, anything this comes in contact with is just gonna get ripped apart um, immediately. So, it looks like the eye just gets completely obliterated here as she gets shocked through it. But, hey, I can't blame Pernida. I couldn't really handle a hand job of that level from Nemu either. Boom! I still had one! Yes! Um, okay, that's the end of the chapter. So, uh, yeah, but uh, then again, we also had a chapter focusing entirely on Nemu's past, learning about sympathies of Mayori and everything like that. Uh, 
shit's gonna hit the fan next chapter. You know what? Okay, I'm bumping up my penalty games, okay? Because this fight has gone on for so damn long. I mean, longer than a typical Bleach chapter, right? I mean, okay, how am I, how, I mean, longer than a, than a typical Bleach fight. How long did, um, my, uh, Kampachi's fight against, uh, Gremi, how long did that last? Okay, that was from chapter 573 to 579, right? So that was, uh, okay, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, uh, well, no, was it nine? Did he die? Did, did Grammy die in nine? No, 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 it was nine. It was nine. Okay, so that's seven chapters. Seven chapters. So, this one has gone on since, okay, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, okay, 42. So, it's eight. So, this is longer than Kampachi's fight with Grammy. I'm just using that as a benchmark, because that was a pretty long fight as well, um, by Bleach standards, anyway. So, next chapter, I'm bumping up the penalty game. Shit's gonna go down. Either something's going to happen with Nemu where it looks like she's going to die, or something's going to happen with Mayuri that looks like he's going to die. Because I can guarantee you Pernite is not finished off by this. Particularly since we have another arm, you know, that's still around somewhere. So that might come back to kick their ass later on, but I'm moving it up. So next chapter, if... I'm not saying they don't have they have to die. I'm saying like by the end of the chapter, you know, Nemu or Mayori are gonna have like a serious injury. Okay, that shit's gonna happen, alright? And if it doesn't, I'll do a penalty game. So post your fucking suggestions below. Um but yeah, okay, so uh, past about Nemu, really cool that we got to see that. Considering that we kind of pushed this to the side, like, back when uh, Mayuri stated it, like, you know, this is my daughter, I artificially created her. It's just kind of one of those things after a while you just learn to accept. It's like, oh yeah, Mayuri's a mad scientist. Of course he can create this 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 big-breasted woman out of nothing. Sure, why not? We have to like, just sit back and think about, you know, what, what the like logistics involved in this are. Also, I find it really cool... And this might sound weird, and I, I might sound a little bit sadistic for this, but who else, whenever you think about, like, before this chapter, where any of you were thought, like, a Nemu's childhood growing up with Mayori, did, did, I mean, I was thinking some pretty scary thoughts, considering, you know, what she is, you know, all the crap Mayori might have done to, like, experiment with her, especially how she, how he treats uh, Nemu at the beginning of the series, you know? But from these flashbacks, we see, like, her life's not too bad, you know? Should we see her in certain scenes, like, eating and sleeping and, and drawing with crayons? We, we don't see her, like you know, being forced to do all this, like, experimentation shit. Like, I'm sure Mayuri did some stuff to her, but this was his prime... Pr this, was, this was, like, his, uh, his gem. Which kind of brings it up more attention of why he treated her like freaking bag of dirt, you know, in the fight against Uryu. You know, I mean, yeah, but, you know, whatever. I mean, this is, like, his prime thing, and whatever. But, yeah, uh, her new powers that I think she gained are simply a matter of, like, she was able to, like, you know, control her body at will. Like, she's now able to, like, take off parts of her soul and use them for battle. Kind of resembles uh, Black Star and Stein's, you know, like, soul force attack in Soul Eater. You know, that, that's kind of what it reminded me of. Um, but, yeah, I'm just going to say that's, her, that's her, her new access to her upgrade, that she can just, you know, control and manipulate her soul completely at will, you know, to the point where, you know, she can almost bring it, to th like, to the threshold of killing herself, but not quite. So, uh, to close this out, though, and I'm going to bring this up, and I already brought it up in an earlier chapter review, whenever I was talking about how Mayori is uh, starting to feel like an actual emotion that maybe resembles love toward Nemu, like, for being a for being his daughter instead of seeing her as just, like, an object. Well, in this chapter, when Mayori's going on and on about, you know, uh, dreaming and stuff like that, and, uh, and and then we had Akon talking about, you know, uh, what Mayori views Nemu as and everything like that, I'm getting the impression here that... Mayori's dream was to have a child, you know, like to be a parent, you know, it might sound weird given his personality, but this is what I'm getting across here, honestly. Ah, yes, well, you know, that's just how it goes, you know, teching, you can't just expect your dreams just to come into fruition, you have to work at it, you know, make your dreams happen, just like in that Shia LaBeouf video. Yeah, well, let me tell you, Mayuri, I dreamt last night that I got killed in an atom bomb explosion, so I really don't think I want that dream to come into reality. Oh, but you must try, Teching, and actually it's kind of a moot point because the second you said atom bomb, I reflexively launched a nuke at your house. So, uh, have fun! You know what? I'm cool with this. Mayori, you're my favorite captain. I'm cool to get nuked out of existence because of you. All right, everyone. Well, guess this will be the last chapter review for me. It's been fun. Teching 101, signing out.